In this video, we are going to have a look at how to spin up a Microsoft 365 tenant that is completely free, comes with all the licenses, and you can use it for learning Microsoft 365 or if you're preparing for your Microsoft 365 certification exams. Now let's fire up Firefox and let's go to this particular URL. I will put a link in the description, developer.microsoft.com. So this is the Microsoft 365 developer program. So what it does is it gives you an instant sandbox pre-configured with sample data, including Teams developer portal, and you can start developing on the Microsoft 365 platform. This is mainly intended for developers so that they can try out various uh, applications that they have before they take it to production. So as you can see over here, it's a free developer instant sandbox. It comes with 90 days Microsoft 365 E5 licenses and it comes with pre-provisioned with Microsoft 365 apps. This is especially helpful if you are preparing for an exam and if you want to look up certain settings or change a policy, see how it affects the users. This is a proper lab, free of cost, instantly spun up by Microsoft. Now, these are the items that are included. So it comes with 25 user licenses for development purposes. You can't use it in production. Now the instant sandbox that you have, you cannot have your own tenant name. So if you're going with the instant sandbox option, this my tenant portion of the dot on microsoft.com will be dynamically assigned by Microsoft. So it will comprise with numbers and characters and it will make no sense. It will be like for KUY, 62, whatever. Whereas if you want to have mycompany.onmicrosoft.com, you do have the option to customize the sandbox, but that means that it doesn't come with any of the sample data, it doesn't come with anything pre-populated, you have to do everything on your own. So it's up to you whether you want to go with the sample data and 25 users or whether you want to create everything manually. If you are starting out, I would recommend that you spin up the instant sandbox so that everything is pre-configured for you. All right, let's try and spin up this particular tenant. Let's click on join now. Let's wait for it to load. You need to have a Microsoft account. Let me log in using my account. If you don't have an account, you can create one using the same window. So you can use no account, create one option, and you can create a Microsoft account, which is at hotmail.com or outlook.com or live.com, whatever the case may be. Click on next. You need to punch in your password. So I have password less enabled. So let me pick up the notification on my authenticator. Send notification. Let me verify my login by punching in the number that's shown on the screen. You can also use the password if you're comfortable with that. So let's say no to that. I'm logging in to the Microsoft developer platform. Now, this is where the fun stuff begins. So you can select the country. So you need to fill in these, these options, country and region, provide a company name, it doesn't really matter. You can just type it in my company or your name. It just doesn't matter. Uh, your preferred language, mine is English, accept the terms. If you want to have newsletters from Microsoft, you can check the option and click next. In the next window, it is asking for what the primary focus is going to be as a developer. So whether you're going to have applications to be sold in the market, these are just for random survey questions. You can just say personal projects, click next. It just doesn't really matter as to what you say over here. You could select a couple of options that you are interested in, save, and wait for the portal to load the next page. So this is the option in which, so the first one, instant sandbox, it comes with everything pre-configured, 25 user accounts, with sandbox data. So you'll have few emails, Teams channels created, few conversations being created. This is a very good option if you're going with preparing for an exam or if you want to check out certain settings or if you want to improve your knowledge. Now the drawback for this particular option is that you cannot customize the domain name. So it will be a random prefix dot on microsoft.com. 
you will have the license for 90 days you can renew the license after that you can extend the license for free so you can keep it as a lab beyond 90 days if you want to have your own tenant name say for example mycompany.onmicrosoft.com you can click the configurable sandbox and go with the next option and here you can say what domain name you need say for example over here i would say say superman for example as the username and my domain name is a tech shuffle just need to see whether that is taken or not yeah domain name is taken so if it wasn't taken it would be superman which is the username you can have anything you want at your company name or whatever you take as your company name or tenant name dot on microsoft.com this last part dot on microsoft.com cannot be changed every tenant comes with a dot on microsoft.com account that doesn't mean that you can't have other domains like mydomain.com you surely can but you need to add those domains later on so this is just setting up the tenant from scratch so you could have some numbers or you could try some variations let's see whether dot is allowed now it, i could have some numbers at the end i could say text shuffle lab for example let's see whether that is taken or not so that is available so i could use that if i go with the customized option and then flip create a password and then you know continue with that option when which you will get 25 user licenses you have to set everything up now let's go back with the preferred option of the instance sandbox for a beginner or for someone who is preparing for the exam let's click on next um, asking for the country for your data center so pick a data center which is closest to you so that you have better performance i mean these days with the you know gig broadband and whatnot it's not that big a deal but you know it's in your best interest to pick a location that is closest to you so that the latency will be slightly better so i'm sticking to us it just doesn't really matter so let me give superman as the username so this is going to be your global administrator the user account with full admin rights on the tenant so make sure that whatever password you type in you remember those because there is no way to get back in if you don't have that so let me punch in a password a long one preferably all right seems like it doesn't like it let's see let me just paste it in okay now your instant sandbox comes with 16 fictitious users pre-installed so you can go with a different password for all those 16 users or if you don't give a password over here all the users will have the same password as your administrator so it's up to you so you need to punch in your mobile number wait for the sms to come through this is to verify that you are not a robot get the text message and punch in your code so that it verifies your mobile number and click on setup now it says setting up your developer subscription now the operation should take only about a minute let's wait for it to continue there you go it has gone into the portal that doesn't mean that the tenant is fully set up yet let's go through the details that it has presented all right so the name of the domain that i have the tenant name is y4712 dot on microsoft dot com so we cannot customize this name or we can we can't have our own names given if it is an instant sandbox if you went with the customizable sandbox option you could punch in a tenant name of your choice if it is not taken you can go ahead with that if it is taken you will have to go with a variation of whatever you have in mind now it's a renewable microsoft 365 e5 subscription and the administrator username that i have is superman and then the tenant name dot on microsoft dot com i have nine user licenses and 16 users with sample data these are the sample data packs i have user accounts emails and events in it teams and sharepoint so it's it's pretty good so what we need to now do is click on go to subscription it will log you into the microsoft 365 portal it's asking for the password rightfully 
because you're logging in for the first time. There's no session going on at the moment. All right. Action required. Security defaults are enabled to keep your organization secure. So what this means is, by default, when Microsoft spins up an Office 365 tenant, there are certain security policies or conditional access policies that is triggered to make the session or to make the tenant more secure. So here, you're being prompted to enable MFA. And it says you have 14 days until this is required. So you could skip by saying ask later over here for 14 days. And after that, you will have to go ahead with an MFA registration. And every time you log in, you will have to satisfy an MFA prompt. Now, the sake for the demo, let me just skip this one by saying ask later. Let's log into the portal and see what we have. It's taking slightly longer. It's setting up the tenant. Sometimes it takes a while before the full tenant is being set up. So this is the Microsoft 365 developer tenant that we have created. Completely free. Comes with all the accounts, the licenses that you need. One other caveat is that you cannot have Azure in the mix, in the sense that you will have an Azure AD at the back end, which is Microsoft Entra ID, which has been renamed. So you will have your directory up in the cloud, but you cannot spin up virtual machines for free by using this Microsoft 365 developer tenant. So that is out of the equation, but it is still a good one if you are new to Microsoft 365 platforms or you're taking your exams or you want to brush up your knowledge. So this is your admin portal. Let's click on admin. Let's see what we have. All right, let's expand everything. Let's click the users. We will have, we should have some users being set up. So there you go. We have quite a few user accounts, about 16 of them being set up with the username, with the license correctly assigned. So if I click on one of them, sorry. Yes, if I click on one of the existing users, it comes with all the information that you would expect for a normal user account. So it gives you all the groups that the user is part of. So these are the groups that it has created. There's a photograph, there's a name, there are some email addresses, phone numbers. These are all sample data. So you could see as to how a Microsoft 365 tenant in production will look like. So the devices information that you have, user doesn't have any information around devices. The licenses that's been applied for this particular user is a 365 E5 developer and apps that comes with it. So you have all of these to play with. Now mail, so this is your mailbox up in the cloud. Exchange online to be precise. And your OneDrive information. So there is a mailbox that has been spun up. It's some ha it has some data in it, about 140 KB, so maybe a couple of emails. So this is really good. So if you want to have a look at your exchange information, Click on exchange within the admin portal on the left hand side. It brings up your exchange admin center where you can see all the mailboxes for the users that you have in the distribution groups and all of those good stuff. So these are the mailboxes as you can see quite a few mailboxes over here and groups. These are a couple of distribution groups that's been created by Microsoft various team distribution list. And you can play with all of these ones. So you can click on one of those, see how it looks like, what are the properties, how can I change the properties, where the options are. So it gives you a real feel of as to how things work in the Microsoft 365 platform. Now, having said that, apart from these users that you have, you can add your own users. So you can create a user account, say Tech Shuffle, for example. And you can play with them. So just as if you would while you're working for a company. So it's checking whether the user has been taken on this particular tenant. It isn't. You can automatically get the system to create a password or you can punch in the password yourself. And you can require this user to change the password as soon as they log in for the first time if you want. Now send password in email upon completion. You can email the password to the admin account so that the administrator can give the initial password for the user if you are pre-staging the user account. Say for example, the user is only going to start next month or next week. Let's uncheck all of those, click next. 
you can pick the location as to where the user is. Let me just go ahead with the default United States. You can assign a license. You can also create a user account without a license if it is going to be purely for administrative purposes. Say, for example, you want to have an admin account, global admin, or maybe an exchange administrator. You necessarily don't need a license for that unless you are having a separate uh, admin account. I should rephrase that. If you have the same account, so your main account that you use for your emails and teams and everything, and you still want to have admin rights, which is not recommended, you need to have the licenses. If you have two separate accounts, one for admin purposes and one as your normal account, your administrative account can be created without any product license and you can use it. So let me assign the license as it is a normal user account. Click next. If you want to specify any permissions, say for example, you want this person to be a global admin or an exchange admin, you can select so. I'm just creating a normal user here and you can fill in all the profile information, job title and department, phone numbers, just as you would in the on-premise Active Directory, if you are familiar with that. Click on Next. It gives you a summary of what you are doing and what you have done so far, the licenses, the display name, the username, and the UPN, the roles, and click Finish Adding, and it will create the user account for you. So it is not just a read-only sandbox. You can always work with it, just as if it is a production Microsoft 365 tenant of your company. I hope this has been informative. If you have any questions regarding how to set a Microsoft 365 developer tenant or how to go about various options that you have, feel free to put, an, put your comment in the comment section and I will reply to you as soon as I can. And as always, I will produce a couple of videos at least every working day around Microsoft 365, Azure, Linux, and Windows. If that is of any interest to you, do consider subscribing to the channel and thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Thank you.